stains And I'm so in love with you For what you've done for me Here I am to worship you Without any restraint You're the only way The truth and life That makes me You're listening to Spiritual Encounters with Pastor Casper McLeod. And now, here's your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. Welcome to another edition of Spiritual Encounters, and I am your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper, and I'm excited to have my guest, Laurie Colley, back. And bringing her on in just a moment, and we're talking about how many, you know, think about how many national and international leaders today are openly calling for the need for a one rule global government. Nevertheless, we've got President Donald Trump saying he's putting Americans first, and, you know, (laughs) he's not going to be judged by organizations like the UN. When I lived in in the UK, I like the fact that they, back then they put Britain first, so I think that's a good idea. I like, I, you know, I want to put the Lord first in all things, and then my family and the church and so on. Um, it tells us in Matthew nineteen twenty eight, and, and Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that you which follow me in, in the regenerations, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Remember, you're going to even judge angels. So reliable sources indicate, when I was a recording artist for Atlantic Records, the leadership performed apparently a lot of sex crimes every night. Um, my producer, the late Ahmed Erdogan, um, has been charged in recent times uh, with a former employee of, of this kind of lifestyle. I, I do recall he invited me to dinner once at the, his club, the, the Hellfire Club, and as a baby Christian, I, I didn't think that was some place I should go. I'm glad I didn't. I found out later Benjamin Franklin was a member, and so I declined his offer. Um, and, but every day at a lot of records, you know, I took sex, drugs, and rock and roll very seriously, especially the, the sex and drugs part. But we find that's going on in the political arena. These things are, st- are going on, and... So glad to have Laurie here to share some insights here with a praying citizen. I mean, so we got these elite people in positions that appear to do these kind of sex crimes every single day. And yet when some outsider who might undo their evil ways comes along, they'll do anything within their power, within their systems to try and destroy them. Um, and then, you know, they'll even call sex crimes as being a horrible thing. I mean, wow, what complete hypocrites are we dealing with here? Uh, I mean, they the carry on these kind of abuses. I mean, these are the same people that are trying to push an agenda that, that make, like, sex with children considered normal, stealing rainbow images and all the rest of it, right? So, um, I mean, how hypocritical and, and, and it, it, this whole thing is unfolding here. Um, Laurie Cully, welcome back to this virtual encounter. So glad you're here because you've, you've just doing some powerful um, insights with your, your newsletters and your videos and blogging. So um, what, what's your take on what's hol- uh, unfolding here right before us with um, this, this thing in America with the, with the judge being uh, um, in- indicated here with all kinds of crimes that no one could prove? Hmm. Well... I think it's, I've used the word circus before to describe what's going on, and I really believe that it is, we're at uh, unprecedented times, even when Clarence Thomas or uh, Robert Bork, who were nominees for the Supreme Court, were grilled, and when things happened there with uh, allegations of sexual misconduct as far as Clarence Thomas, and with Bork you know, the way they came after him because he was a conservative. This is, take those times, add them together and multiply by a thousand. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. And um, 
it, it amazes me that anybody can survive this kind of thing. Uh, Trump and Kavanaugh and Kavanaugh's wife and his children. It is uh, truly unprecedented. And if you didn't have faith, I think it could be a very scary time. I would agree. I mean, uh, we, we think about it. We've got people making plans and secret meetings behind highly secure doors um, they're, they're heavily gone, you know, armed guards are standing there, right? Keep you out, but they don't want you to have any weapons, of course. Um, and the, and they're maybe like they're influencing the economies, they can control energy resources, along with even weather manipulation, artificial intelligence technologies. I um, mean, look what's going on with China right now where, um, you know, facial recognition and, and getting a scorecard, it, it, you know, it makes sure you say the right thing, because if you don't, your score goes down, and pretty soon there won't be any any work for you, and no food, no anything, right? And so, not only that, they're also going to be weighing your family members and the people you associate with. Absolutely, And yeah. if they have bad scores, then your score goes down as well. So I think we might be looking at a, a connection here with the mark of the beast that we, we see in Scripture, Um and we consider how these elected officials are behind highly secured doors and privacy and say it's national security. I mean, what are they hiding, right? I mean, why, why can't they do these things in the open where everybody's involved, but that's not going to happen. I, but it does tell us, you know, it reminds me, um, the, the word of the Lord says in Luke 8, 17, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, and neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come abroad. I think those things are happening now. Um, so we see these agendas on the left and the right, um, and somehow they're still moving towards the same destinations, eroding people's freedom in the process. Um, I mean, how many national, international leaders today are, are openly calling for one rule global government, just like the Vatican is involved with? Um, so, the, the, you know, that great deception that we've been talking about, it, it's, it's happening right now. It's, it's right there. Um, and it, Go ahead. Yes, and it's been building... Um, while we were asleep, you know, we had uh, government programs under DARPA, and we had that lifelong program that was formulated by the CIA, which the day that that program ended was the day that Facebook was born. Mm -hmm. Coincidence. And just a coincidence, and Google um, being actually funded and begun by the CIA. Um, Operation Paperclip, friends. It is, and if you're new to this stuff, it it literally blows your mind. I feel sorry for people that are just coming into into um, awake and awake stage right now because they're probably being bombarded with things that make them feel crazy. But I can say, in all truth, you're not crazy. You're just catching up. Well, indeed. Um, I mean, there's a spiritual battle going on. It's a cosmic spiritual daily battle, and, and people in the church need to, you know, rise up to the occasion here and and, and be praying in the Holy Ghost. And um, I mean, as as Christians, you had better know what you believe, why you believe it today, and 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 better understand why you believe the Holy Scriptures are true, and what you believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah, Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, the savior of the entire world. Why do you believe that? You better know why you believe it. Understand um, why he was tortured, why he's, by his stripes you were healed, and why he was crucified, why he rose from the dead, was resurrected, and um, why we believe the, the Holy God booked at the supernatural. I mean, because people are going to challenge your beliefs. Um, we think about it, you know, I mean, the word of God, um, if we walk in the light, and, and he's as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But we say we've not sinned, we deceive ourselves, and the truth not in us. So what is going on here? Um, we recall just, you know, some years back, um, we had the, uh, the Bill Clinton thing going on in the Oval Office, and the president was sexually um, involved, um, harassing women, but it was somehow dismissed by the Democrats as just, well, it's just, you know, just boys will be boys. Um, I mean, it's like multiple people came against him, right? And nothing happened, Well, right? what about all the women that accused him of rape? Yeah, I mean, what, and, what's and with that? And abuse. So we had, um, 
yeah, you know, it was a number of women that came forward and um, Clinton's accusers were, were dismissed as discredited as liars and psychos, right? And then you had well, that's the, because back then, even then, they had the media in their pockets. <laughs> you had the the, the 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 Lewinsky thing went public, and the Democrats insisted that the president of the United States, rolling around on the floor of the old office, was just you know, just something guys just do, and it's no big deal. I mean, he's it's not going to affect his performance as the president of the United States, right? I mean, how well, he how never he never should have been president because the, all the things that they're demanding happen with Kavanaugh right now should have happened with Bill Clinton, and they didn't. Well, how, you know, the, how is James, that? What a double James, standard. What a double standard. And in fact, you know, what James Carville, who was Clinton's, you know, fixer and mm -hmm. whatever he was, his, his, his advisor back then, you know, he, he labeled these women. He said, all you have to do is drag a dollar bill through a trailer park, and that's what you end up with. And so he, he, he accused these women of of bringing these allegations because they were money hungry. If those things had been said, can you imagine about this Christine Blasey Ford and this Deborah Mar Ramirez and whoever else are going to bring out? What if they said those things today about those women? Can you imagine? That would be an impeachable offense at this point. Now, if, if Trump had said that or if, if uh, Kavanaugh you know, he would be out on his ear. But it was okay for Bill Clinton because Bill Clinton was the deep state cabal elitist choice, the globalist new world order choice for president, and nothing was going to stand in the way. So, Didn't matter. So it's okay for those on, on you know, program with liberalism um, to consider the affairs and all the mistresses we had with um, the accounts of FDR, JFK, and the whole connection with him and Marilyn Monroe and, and you know, the way they took him out because she was going to spill the beans on the whole UFO phenomena. Um, Robert Kennedy, LBJ, um, Ted Kennedy, right, the Clintons. And, and according to um, those on the Democratic side, the, the, these, these were all great men. I mean, so all great men. All great yes. men, yeah. All great men. Um, and so I don't, I don't, I think they're, they're banking on two things. Number one, they control the narrative. And number two, we have, what, how many years ago was that? That was the 90s. So you've got a couple of generations of young people, basically, that don't remember, that don't know about it. And, it, you know, it's kind of like if it didn't happen in my lifetime, then it didn't happen kind of thing. Mm. Right? I mean, basically, I mean, if, if they were alive, they were children. Um, and so... It's easy to just sweep it under the rug, and we, you know, we've got with the education system we have. They're certainly not going to hear about it in school, right? It, it appears they won't. You know, and so they've got the the Democrats. I, I hate to hate to even say the Democrats because it's beyond party. I mean, it is the you know, for all intents and purposes, right now it's the Democrats. But this is a a system. This is the beast system. Well, I mean, and there's problems on both sides of the there's political problems parties. On both sides. Yes. And so, you know, they can get away with it at this point. They can get away with it because nobody remembers Bill, what Bill Clinton did. And those who remember are, you know, are keeping it quiet. So, so it, at the same time, if I'm correct, uh, there's a Democrat involved in a similar scandal. There's um, a chap named Keith Ellison, right? He's, mm -hmm. he's a divorced um, Muslim congressman from Minnesota. He's the apparently the what the deputy chair of the Democratic Party, and he's yep. got a, a, um, an ex-girlfriend with pictures and you know um, some kind of Doctors evidence. Doctors' reports. Yeah. yeah. And and what's going on with that? Nothing. 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 What about there's a 17 million dollars? Um, it's part of a slush fund that the House, the Speaker of the House controls, that has been paid out to silence women who have brought sexual harassment. I mean, I suppose there could be some men in there, too, but that have brought um, allegations of sexual harassment, sexual misconduct against members of the House. And they have, uh, Paul Ryan has used $17 million to silence those people. What about that? That's our money. That's our taxpayer money that's been paid as hush money.
I mean, it's, it's, it's sick. It's really sick. And, you know, as um, Christians, we go to the polls, we vote, we campaign for people that we think are going to do the right thing. And up until Donald Trump, I don't think we've had any honest politicians. You know, perhaps Reagan was, I don't know. Um, I don't, you know, I was a young woman at the time. I don't really remember, but I could, I know now that there's nobody in Washington that's clean. I mean, I think everybody's, of course, we all have our issues, but, um, and I don't mean they're all, when I say they're not clean, I think, I think it's almost impossible to be a politician um, in this day and age. If we you know, say and we not, have no sin, the truth's not in us. Yes, so. and I think they, they all take money, you know, from different groups. And, you and know, this maybe has been going on since the Babylonian days or oh probably before. So, I mean, this is a spiritual issue we're talking about, which is why we're talking about it on Spiritual Encounters, because it's spiritual. It's spiritual. And, and I was reading in, oh, I can't remember where I was today. I think it was Haggai. Um, and, you know, there's a courtroom in heaven. And Satan goes regularly to the courtroom in heaven to bring accusation against mankind. And it is a spiritual battle that is, it happens. There's something that is going on on another plane that we can't see. Although I think we feel the effects of it down here. So when Satan was, you know, went, presented himself before the Lord in the time of Job, the sons of God presented themselves and Satan went with them. And it's, it has not stopped. Like it's, like you said, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. That stuff still goes on and Satan presents himself and there's a spiritual battle. There's a spiritual war going on and we see the effects of it. And when I say that, you know, I want to really be careful. Um, when I say that there's probably nobody who's clean, what I mean is, you know, blackmail gets used, um, threats against family members get used. And I think it'd be very hard to be a politician who wants to do the right thing these days because I think there's the system is set up for failure so that you cannot um, stay clean. Although I think there are certainly men, very honorable men and women that are there. And, I, you know, Jim Jordan comes to mind and Matt Getz, Gates, I guess his name is, and um, Devin Nunez from California, uh, Trey Gowdy. You know, there's some men that are... are outstanding, I believe, and some women too, but I just think, wow, what a difficult job, and, and against all the odds, these people are doing a great job. Well, it is interesting to see how this is all unfolding in these end times. Um, for those that may not be paying close attention to what's going on there, and um, what, what is going on here with this um, Supreme Court justice? Um, we've got we, you know, they've revealed a, a charge of sexual harassment um, from 35 years ago when this judge, Kavanaugh, uh, his accuser is a, a lady, um, was it Dr. Christine Ford? And they were in high school, right? So the Democrats um, apparently uh, refused to consider seriously this, this thing that's going on when, when, you know, we had all the Bill Clinton things a few years back, right? If somehow it's all reversed now, um, how how is that possible? I mean, again, you know, we're looking at blatant hypocrisy, right? So, yes. And last night, Kavanaugh and his wife were on the Martha McCallum program while they were being interviewed by her on Fox. And you know, he he just kept saying the same thing over and over again. I didn't do this. I've never done anything like this. And he was accused of um, cornering this woman at a party at someone's house. She cannot remember whose house, the date, even the year, even though she says she was 15, um, what the address was, how she got there, how she got home, um, what she was wearing. She doesn't remember any of that, but she remembers what she says was Kavanaugh cornered her, threw her on a bed, put his hand over her mouth. She, she thought he was going to inadvertently kill her by suffocating her. And then he tried to rape her until his buddy, whose name is uh, Mark Judge, pulled him off of her or body slammed him, knocked him to the floor, whatever. And so she says all of this 
Now, she is a psychologist in California. She's a doctor of psychology. She is a researcher and director for a company that they have one product, and it is an abortion pill. Um, so that kind of adds, yes, fascinating. And, you know, that adds a little twist to things because Kavanaugh, you know, one of the things that they've said is Kavanaugh is going to reverse Roe v. Wade, or if he can, he will vote to do that, which he doesn't like the sacrifice of babies, yeah, to Baal or Moloch. Um, he's a Catholic. He says he spent his high school time in in school, in church, and he played sports. Um, then the second allegation came out over the weekend, this woman named Deborah Ramirez, who says that she knew him at Yale and that at a party, he either A, exposed himself to her or B, he waved a sexual object in front of her. And he did, he's like, no, I, you know, I didn't do these things. I did not do them. And he wants to go and he wants to be grilled. He wants to have be cross-examined. He wants to testify to the fact that he did not do these things. And he wants his, his um, dignity and his good name restored. So, you know, I, I, and then this other guy, you know, Michael Avenatti, who's the lawyer for Stormy Daniels, and if you haven't been keeping up with it, she was a woman who accused Donald Trump of having sex with her, and it wasn't coerced, it was consensual, and she is a porn, well, you know, what do you want, you can't, using the word porn star, I suppose, is kind of gives it, you know, more um, credibility than what it is. I mean, basically, she's a prostitute who made films, right? And Donald Trump's lawyer Michael Cohen paid her off because it, it's like a nuisance suit. You know, it's one of those things where, and I, you know, I've never made a lot of money, so I don't understand this, but apparently people who are very successful get nuisance suits all the time. You know, people trying to get money off of them. And sometimes it's easier to just pay the person off so they'll go away and you don't have to deal with it. So basically that's what happened with her. Well, her, it, it was a non-disclosure, so she wasn't supposed to talk about it, but of course she did. She made the rounds of the talk shows for a couple months. You know, nothing's ever come of it. Well, her um, her lawyer is Michael Avenatti, and now he says someone came to him and told him that Kavanaugh and his friend Mark Judge were setting up women at these parties at Yale with drugs and alcohol and getting them drunk and out of it so that they could have a gang rape party. You know, again, here's this guy, Kavanaugh has never had anything like this ever said about him. He's hit, he's been investigated six times by the FBI for various posts within, you know, he worked for George Bush, uh, George W. Bush. He's nothing like this has ever come out. 65 women, I think it was last Friday, wrote a letter, sent it to um, Chuck Grassley, who's chairman of the committee, the judicial committee that looks at all of this and is in charge of the confirmation hearing and getting him through the process. And this letter comes you know, by these 65 women saying how, what a kind and, and wonderful man he is, how he's always treated women well. He's gone out of his way to make sure they got promotions and you know, all of this, and they all said, you know, this is the kind of man he is. And meanwhile, we've got the sleazeball lawyer and then some, these two women who aren't even really sure because both of the women had been drinking and they don't really remember, so their memories are foggy. You know, and they've waited, one waited 36 years or 37 years, the other one 35 years to bring these allegations forward. How can you, how can you... You know, well, the I timing, don't know. How the, do you in- the timing of this whole thing seems highly, highly suspicious. Oh, suspect. and that's that's not all. That's not it all. So Dianne Feinstein, who is, you know, a leading Democrat in the House, um, sorry, Senate, Senator Dianne Feinstein from California, she's been hanging on to this Dr. Christine F- Blasey Ford or Blasey Ford's letter for seven, six or seven weeks before she even presented it. So they waited until Kavanaugh had gone through all the confirmation, 30 hours of te- you know testifying and talking to um, the members of the Senate committee. 
30 hours, and she didn't bring it up. She's been hanging on to it, to this letter, to the last minute. So th now the FBI has already investigated him, right, to become a judge. Right. I mean, how far back do they go when they investigate? All I mean, the way. I so, have so had family the, members. Back to preschool? They go all the way back. They go back to all preschool right. or, or the they, womb? They actually go back to, you know, this time in a person's life, high school. The, the, the day he was born, you know, they were there Probably. investigating the doctors and the nurses, right, yeah. Did he, did he cry when he was born? You know, was he a crybaby? Yeah, well, we got to know these things. We got to know these things. So, you know, and then here's the, you know, here's more to the story. So the New York, um, New Yorker, Ronan uh, Farrow, ran the story. He wrote the story. He um, put this out about this Deborah Ramirez. I believe that was the story. Anyway, one of the stories. And they tried, yeah, it was Derbert Ramirez. They tried to go find, they interviewed dozens of people that had gone to school with her and him to try and find a witness. They couldn't find one. So the New Yorker ran the story anyway, but the New York Times wouldn't run it because it was unsubstantiated. Well, it so seems like she's got a. How funny it is! It's, she's got uh, Christine Full, Mrs. Full's lack of recall on what you would consider important details. I, I find that troubling. I, I think that everyone should find that troubling. I mean, she can't recall the time, the place, any specific details really. Um, she told. Oh, the, the four, the four. I think she said there were five people, and none of the others. They've, inter they've all come out, even one who was her lifelong friend, have all said they don't remember that party. They don't remember that happening. So, so where we are now is the, the testimony is supposed to take place Thursday. There are many people who don't think it's going to happen because her, her whole story is falling apart. And they're going to vote on him on Friday. So we may have a new Supreme Court justice by, well, first the committee has to vote and then it goes to the full Senate. But we may have one very shortly, um, despite all this, this circus, this nonsense. You know, it's a three-ring circus with false accusation in every ring of the circus. And, you know, Casper, it just makes you wonder um, how stupid they think we are. So uh, it's, you can tell any lie that you want as long as behind the lie you say that it was somebody did something to a woman. You know, something, and I have been sexually abused, okay? So this is not, I'm not picking on the, these women. You know, it is awful, and it takes time to get over it, and, you know, this is not how God intended for women to be treated by anyone. But if you, if you don't, if you can't prove it, if you know you can't go into a courtroom and you can't prove it, then... You know, you just forgive the person. It doesn't matter. You forgive. You've got to forgive and move on. It cannot be. Not everything is a court case. So some things that you know. So they, this is really about the, the fact that they're the fearful he will undo um, the years of whatever yes. that side has done, right? So he will come in and possibly weigh things and and, and reverse Roe versus Wade and destroy the whole thing with Moloch and all the money that they're making, um, you know, off this horrid thing. Yes. And when Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the rest of them, um, you know, there's grand juries meeting right now that they're reviewing all this, this stuff with the people spying on President Trump. You know, that whole mess there where they they've done illegal spying on a presidential candidate and the president. They tried to take him down. It's treason. It's at least sedition. And they don't want somebody like Brett Kavanaugh sitting on the Supreme Court, who Lindsey Graham, when he was interviewing him during the confirmation hearings, he asked him directly about military tribunals. And are they, you know, does a person's rights follow them wherever they go? And he talked about that for a little bit. And then they talked about military tribunals and for treason. Why mm -hmm. would why would Lindsey Graham bring that up? Isn't that something that you've been studying with Q and all that um, they've been talking about? That's a reality that's going to happen at some point after the midterms. Yes, and you know the first person that I heard talk about it was before Q was Mark Taylor. 
you know, who has brought yeah. forth the Trump prophecies and, um, you know, he talked about military tribunals. So, so is that like a message he was sending out into the world, a message in a the bottle there? Um, yes. And how's, yes. how's this playing out? I mean, we've got this, it's, it's basically we've got those that are embracing this new world, brave new world, the Orwellian thing, right? So then parents of boys um, would have to understand if this doesn't go the way you, we think it's going to go, then if, if you're the parent of, 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 of a male child, um, what's, what's the, you know, what's, this is ushering in a threat that poses every, every young boy's future, right? Their reputations... Um, college careers, prospects, anything going on because somebody well, can know, come out of nowhere and say, I accuse you, I accuse you, I have no, no real information. I've got no memory of what, it, what actually happened, but I'm, I'm going to make a big circus out of it anyways. Well, it just adds to their plan to em emasculate men. You know, if you have soy boys, you know, men that, are, that have more estrogen than they do testosterone, you know, men lose their, they just lose the edge. They do. And they become these wishy-washy, unable to stand up for anything, give in to their wife. You know, they become, you know, an Ahab, yeah, passive, an Ahab to a Jezebel. And that's what the New World Order wants. They want people that are easily, that are docile and easily controlled and, um, that fits with the whole thing. And yeah, I do, you know, I can think about, you know, my children and my grandchildren and what kind of a world, um, you know, we're leaving behind and hopefully there's going to be re a resurgence of, you know, normalcy and what God would call normalcy. But I wonder because with the transgender movement and did you see, I don't know if you saw this, but there was this big fashion show in, um, I think it was it was either Italy or France, where they have women walking down the runway with three breasts. Hmm. That's the new fashion look. Did you know that? No, that one escaped me. <laughs> Thankfully, thank you, Lord. Thank you that that escape cost me. I mean, my gosh, what are they trying to do with us? So what, you know, what, what's going on? We got this authoritarian leadership. It, now you know this. This is a spiritual battle that we're talking about. Uh, I mean, we're talking about politics. Sorry, keep bumping into the microphones here. But, um, but this is a spiritual battle going on, and and we see that this is not just in the world and in the stage political arena, but it's gone into the churches as well. And and so we've got a lot of um, churches that have gone off the rails. Um, where they've got uh, authoritative leaderships, right? We've got cult members that, um, like certain groups like Jehovah Witnesses, right? They're, they're, they're complete submission to the, the leadership of the um, church. And um, they're expected to just submit to anything they say, agree with all the requirements. Unquestioning, um, you know, obedience is compulsory. You can't, can't ask any questions, right? If you, you've seen that kind of thing going on as well, right? I have. And it's not, you know, it is not just in um, offshoot Christian organizations, okay? It is in Christianity itself. And I think, I don't know, I think some of it is because our world has gotten so crazy that people just want some strong figure to follow. They want someone to tell them, black and white, this is good, this is bad, I will protect you. So you've got a whole, you've got generations of people growing up without fathers or growing up with abusive fathers, right? Or fathers that were there but didn't just kind of let mom handle everything and the passive fathers. And so you've got, you've got men and women alike looking for strong authority figures, you know, and that's why... Um, when Barack Obama says, you know, I'm your, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a good father to this country, that appeals to people. You know, that because they don't, of, Adolf Hitler did the same thing. He, he actually did say he was a father. He, he saw himself as the father figure of Germany. Yeah, it's very dangerous. Um, you know, didn't God say, Jesus say, don't call any, any man, man father? your father, yeah. 
you know, um, nudge, nudge, hint, hint. If you're in yeah. a place that's doing that, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean there are there are places, and you you and I know we've talked about it. Um, we both had an, you know, I don't know how. What would you call it? It's not a brush with. It is a full indoctrination in a cult. Well, and you and I both um, were in in a, in a place which started out quite good, I thought. Um, and, and we saw at the time, um, you know, reading scripture and seeing people healed. And, and there's yes. some, some great insights that were happening. But then the leadership um, became dictators. And, and, Maybe, and they yeah. went off the track. And then the love of money being the root of all evil was kind of like, hey, you got a good thing going here. The enemy came in and was like, we can help you franchise this and you know like mcdonald's and we'll, we'll put them all over the world and um you, you were a part of that in fact you were on the um you were a director for uh, one of the programs at this place i was i was and i learned i learned a lot i was you know forced to mature um and i was forced to mature out of fear because so i learned questioning Doubt yes, uh, or mm -hmm. dissent uh, was totally discouraged and, and, and even punished. You were punished uh, verbally, right? For, for yeah, even for questioning. two and a half hours. Yeah, for yeah. even questioning. Mm -hmm. For saying, I don't feel safe here. Mm. You know, that was one of the things that um, I got a lecture on that one. And uh, yeah, it was, it, it, it's very interesting. And it started, it did start out really good. And we did see some. I mean, we saw stuff. We saw demons flee. We saw people being delivered. We saw people, you know, you see the preachers on TV and they they slay people in the spirit and they slam them in the forehead and the people fall over. But when they get up off the ground, they're the same as when. But in this place, you know, we didn't we sometimes saw people falling, but it wasn't like that. It was when demons were cast out and they were different afterwards. They were at peace. They didn't have that demonic presence in them. And these were Christians who had been tortured by demonic presences. And, and it was, you know, they were the behind a lot of diseases. Huge. Yeah. I mean, they, they, uh, yes. these demons, just like the Lord said, I mean, they, I mean, there's a lot of scripture references there um, and, and how this works. And first thing the Lord said when, after he was resurrected, was the cast all demons, you know, and very few f churches understand that concept. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, there was, there was some really good people. They all left after a little while, right? They all kind of woke up to the fact that there was something not right not about right. the place. Yeah, um, and so there were like waves of people that would just leave. And whenever that happened, then the leadership would double down on, um, you know, those people were sent by Satan. Uh, they were of the devil. They were trying to split the church. They were trying, you know, all this, um, you know, we've got to get watchmen on the wall and keep, you know, we, we need to keep the wolves, you know, keep watch for the wolves. But, you know, the, the funny thing was when, when we would get these lectures about we were the watchmen on the wall and we need to report anything, you know, it was kind of like, um, <laughs> you know, the, the brown shirts, right, in Germany, reporting on, you know, you report on your neighbor, whatever, because that would happen there. And one time I said to my husband, you know, do you ever think about it? The watchmen on the wall aren't watching inside the city for the danger. They're watching outside. But we were always taught that the dangers were inside because people, you know, there were Satan's had sown people in and amongst us and we should turn them in. Well, this, um, this particular that, church um, actually had cameras and recorders even in the toilets, right? I mean, and it was it was like Big Brother after a while. Yeah, I don't know if I could verify. You know, I don't. Yeah, I've heard that. I didn't actually. Um, you know, I didn't see those. I saw other. I saw normal. You know, mm -hmm. um, cameras, uh, surveillance. You know, just cameras that you would have and on any building just to, you know, But there was a, a, a sense that, you know, you had to be part of the group and you couldn't, yes. you couldn't leave. If you left the group, you wouldn't be able to survive on your own. I mean, that was a, a signature of, of a cult. And then, you know, they were preoccupied with making money, which is another right. a, a cult signature. So, I mean, look, either you're, you know, about the business of God or you're in business 
selling gold, you know? So, um, Oh, and you know, and they would keep, they, until recently, they kept all of their finances secret. And if anybody ever asked, this was a church. You sh- you're supposed to have, you know, the body of Christ is supposed to be responsible for how the money is spent. You know, I was always in a Baptist church. We always had business meetings where you'd vote on the, on the budget. Well, this place kept everything. You, nobody knew any of the budget. And if you asked, you were told off. How and dare so the, you ask the, the, about the main, that? The main pastor here was actually a rageaholic um, behind the scenes. Totally, yeah. Um, I, th- that's been substantiated um, a number of times to me. And, in fact, uh, I've ministered to quite a few people that came out of uh, that church that were on staff that were really traumatized by the way they were abused and treated. So um, we will talk about that some more sometime in the future, I believe. And... Um, because these things are going on. I mean, the Lord said in the last days, you know, there'll be false prophets and, you know, false teachers tickling the ears. Um, you've got definite heretics out there at the moment and with, you know, large followings. It's, it's incredible what's going on right now. So, um, unfortunately, we're running towards the end of the program. Um, and I just want to make sure we give everyone an opportunity to get right with the Lord Jesus. Um, Maybe you're you're becoming aware of the fact um, that this stuff is really happening now. Um, as, as we talked about in the beginning, I mean, there's a program impl- implemented in, in China now where everything's being watched. And um, it is, as Laurie it, it shared a little bit ago, I mean, and, and even who you associate with can affect your, your position in society. So now is, is the time to, to get with the Lord. And I, we, you know, there's a lot of hurting people, a lot of needing people out there, and the Lord needs people to come to the truth. They need to understand, and a good place to begin is, is, is making sure that you're making your peace with the Lord and, and all things. I mean, I mean, God so loved the world, he, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He tells us that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and, and, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we'd be saved. Um, so it's really important that we do this. Um, let's just pray right now because we don't know who's out there listening. The Lord arranges these things, but we just pray right now with you. If you would pray along, just say, Father God in heaven, I come to you believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins. And I open my heart now and I I invite the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth to come in and be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving all my sins and cleansing me from all unrighteousness. You teach me your word and fill me with your power of the Holy Spirit. And I forgive all those that have offended me and hurt me and wounded me in any way, shape, or form on both sides of my generations all the way back to Adam. I thank you, Lord, that you would help me to live a life that's glorifying to you. I pray this in the almighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I, can I, do I have a minute to just pray yes. for people that have come out of a cult? Okay, so, and, I, and you know, cult is a, you might sound harsh, so let's just call them highly controlling churches and church leaders where you um, were evaluated by how well you measured up to their standards. And I just want to tell you that that's not the heart of God. His heart is, you know, it's by his grace and his mercy and his goodness that we come to him, not because he's a mean God and he expects so much out of us. So I just, you know, in the name of Jesus, I just release you from those feelings of having to perform to measure up that is not God. That is how Satan is. Satan loves to put people in a prison of performance. And Jesus came to set the captives free. So I just release you from that in the name of Jesus. And I, I would ask you to forgive those who have mistreated you and abused you. Um, turn them back to God. He will deal with them the way that he knows how to deal with them. And you don't need to keep yourself in prison because of your bitterness or your unforgiveness. So just, I just, in the name of Jesus, I just suggest, and I, you know, want you to release yourself 
from that unforgiveness and allow God to restore your heart in Jesus name. In Jesus name. And when you come to the Lord in, in, in humbleness, um, and maybe you're dealing with some sickness or diseases, maybe, you know, they're generational sicknesses or diseases. However it is, the, the Lord in his mercy is wanting to heal you. And I just thank you, Father God, now for releasing healing virtue into everyone that needs a touch from you, whatever it is that they're going through. I thank you, Father God, that hearts are, are, are healed and, and kidneys and neck pain goes and back pain go in Jesus name. I thank you, Father God, that cancer vanishes all the people's bodies. Um, eyes uh, see, blind see again, all those eye issues, cardiacs and all the rest of it go in Jesus name. Um, deafness go in Jesus name. All diseases just vanish and disappear out of your body as you come into alignment to live a life that's glorifying the Christ and walk in divine health in Jesus almighty name. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lori Colley. Check out Praying Citizen News. On, um, it's, um, go ahead. Yeah, it's just go to um, prayingcitizen.wordpress.com, and um, it's there. Or if you want to get the newsletter delivered directly to your inbox, just email me with you know your email address, Lori, L-O-R-I, Colley, C-O-L-L-E-Y, one word, at gmail.com, and I'll put you on my list. And also I'm on YouTube if you just look up Lori Colley. All my, I record all of my newsletters and I put them on YouTube until they censor me. I'm well, just praying that won't happen. But anyway, so for right now, you can go there too. Brilliant. And um, if you did pray that salvation prayer with us tonight, let us know about it. You can reach us at the Upper Room Fellowship.org. There's a contact link there. Tell us, tell somebody what happened. Get with some other true believers and, and just getting the word of God, the word of God will get into you. And we look forward to seeing you next time in another spiritual encounters here, there, or in the air. God bless.
Spiritual Encounters with Casper McLeod is a production of the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries. Visit us at theupperroomfellowship.org. This program is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. The intro and outro music is performed by Casper McLeod from his album, Communion, available at theupperroomfellowship.org. In my face, since I learned to pray, I've got a new life in Jesus, I've got a reason to live. Welcome to another adventure with Spiritual Encounters. We are here to help represent God's work, not ours. Besides the insightful biblical teachings shared by our host, Pastor Casper, we are also very blessed to be able to bring you outstanding interviews with some of the most sought after deep thinkers and voices in Christendom today, helping to make a difference in this world for Christ's sake. We want to keep it that way, to be truly effective in internal matters, truly demands on prayer and being led of the Holy Spirit. If you, like us, long to see the Lord Jesus, Yoshua, glorified here through spiritual encounters, we invite you to join the prayer team. There is nothing more exciting than participating in intercessory prayer with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are a totally faith-based ministry, and so please give and support spiritual encounters as you are led. Truly Grace and Radio have a lot in common. Grace is free to us, but costs Christ an untold price. We may never fully understand this side of heaven. Radio is also free, too. It costs nothing to turn on your dial or stream audio, but it costs us a lot to stay on the air. Spiritual Encounters is almost entirely listener-supported, a privilege, but rare things in these days of big church radio corporations. We've carefully trimmed our budgets to all but wartime essentials, but operating costs are a fact of life. If you've been blessed through our programme, here are some ways you can give back as the Holy Spirit leads. Consider becoming an underwriter by contacting us or simply go to the upper room, fellowship.org and scroll down on the main page to donate.